Hello and welcome. I have left myself a little short on time to record this video today, so it's going to be uh, it's going to be tight, and it had better be one take. So, uh, simple idea again today. The challenge is to split a string into characters. So here we've got a string. Wherefore art thou, Romeo? Uh, and we want to split it into characters. So the basics, obviously, uh, you can get the character in position one by saying mid of that string by that position number, take one character. Giles walked you through that function yesterday. Uh, and so you can do that for position two, for position three, and so on. Uh, and so the, the twist, it's not much of a twist, is just that we're going to make it dynamic with sequence. So, uh, and we can do this as just one array formula here. So we'll take a sequence of the length of the string. So in other words, the number of characters that are in the string, we want a sequence that goes from one to that number. So in this case, let's see, there are 25 characters in the string. Uh, so this, we can even take it out just to look at it separately for a second. This generates a sequence of numbers from 1 to 25, uh, and then we can just feed that directly into, into mid, and that will give us the sequence of the characters. So, very basic tip. Let's look at uh, a couple of examples. So, <clears throat> first, uh, you can use this to reverse a string. Uh, so, like we questions about palindromes are not uh, are not uncommon. So let's see if we can reverse this string. Well, a couple of different ways you could do it. You could do mid of this, uh, oops, sorry, sequence, and we could just get the numbers in reverse. So we want a sequence that has this many characters in it, uh, but you can mess around with the start and step. So the start, the first one should be uh, the last character, which is the length of that, and the step should be minus one. So in other words, it, whatever, let's say this one had 25 characters as well, this sequence would give you 25, 24, 23, actually we can just do it in the evaluation view, let's see. So there are 46 characters here, and if you select that sequence, it'll give you 46, 45, 44, da, 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 all the way down to one. So mid that one uh, will give you the, the sequence of characters, and then you can just use concat to put them all back together. And that gives you this. In this case, there's not a lot of reason that you would want to do that. Uh, Hard question for the uh, for the nerds, uh, and by a few people's request yesterday, I will uh, I will post a link where you can access this workbook uh, in the file. Uh, if you put a couple of emojis in here, uh, that same formula is not going to work so well uh, because it doesn't behave well with emojis. We'll talk more about emojis later in the week, but if you want a challenge, uh, try coming up with a formula that will reverse that string. It is significantly harder. Uh, okay. Second thing uh, that's very relevant is you don't always have to take one character at a time. So for example, here's a pretty typical uh, esports setup. Each turn is two dice rolls. Uh, extract the dice for each turn. So in that case, you could say mid of this uh, sequence land. So this time, if there's, I think there are 40 dice in this sequence. If there's 40 dice, then we want 40 over two pairs of dice. Uh, and sorry, I'll come up here so you can see the prompts up here. Uh, oh, 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 so we start at one, that's fine, and then in steps of two. Uh, and then the number of characters for mid, instead of just putting one at the end, we'll put two. So that gives you the first two dice, then the second two dice, then the third two dice, which is helpful for splitting it into turns. Uh, extract every fourth dice. Similarly, it's just sort of play with, um, sorry, mid again, uh, just playing with the, the setup of sequence. So here it's going to be sequence len of this over four, uh, and we're back to just one character at a time. Uh, sorry, no, that's not right. So that is that is giving you the first, fifth, ninth, etc. dice. But what we wanted was the fourth, eighth, twelfth, etc. So you got to start at four uh, and take steps of four. Uh, and now that matches my here's one I made earlier. Good. Uh, and then the last question. Uh, Harder one, how many times are two of the three dice rolled in a row the same, ignoring turns? So in other words, you know, here's three dice in a row, but also overlapping with that. Here's three dice in a row, also overlapping with that. Here's three, uh, whatever, here's three dice in a row, and so on. Um, I've done it in, in one cell here just for fun, but obviously you might find it easier to split it out into multiple cells. You can do it in particular with two rounds of the, the mid sequence trick. So you can do one to split it into threes, including the, the overlaps, including the repeats, uh, if you just play around with the sequence settings. And then you can do another one to split each one of those into three so that you can figure out if there are repeats. So let's quickly show you some, uh, some applications in battles, in actual battles. So here's laundry time that we looked at yesterday. Uh, we talked about how 
You could use uh, len substitute to figure out how many times this character occurs in this string. You could also do it by splitting the string into characters. So we'll say mid this sequence. <clears throat> and if you want your sequence to go uh, across a row instead of down a column, just leave the row argument blank and put the, the number of characters in the column argument. So the length of that, so I'll come back up here again, uh, one, that gives you all the characters. Uh, and then you could say count ifs, this is that, uh, would give you the right answer. Or you can play around with it various other ways. You could say, you, know, you could wrap this in an if this is equal to that, then one, otherwise zero, wrap it in a sum. There's lots of different ways you could do it, but you get the idea. Um, other kind of cases it has come up in, uh, where is, here it is. Um, this is a case from the Excel Collegiate Challenge finals. Uh, and there's a few other bits involved, but the key thing was anagrams. So here is, here's a list of place names. Uh, and here is various scrambled names. So you had to figure out uh, which place name is this an anagram of. Uh, and splitting into letters and then sorting is a great way to do that because it'll turn any flavor of an anagram into itself. I should have probably pre-prepped this part because uh, you got a text split this on a comma, uh, comma space. And sorry, Giles even talked about this in his video this morning. Don't want to do that all in one go. Um, so we'll do that. And then we'll do unique of to call of this. This is the part I should have just done earlier. Uh, sorry, and also ignoring blanks uh, because then you have your list of place names set up. So then here we can say uh, we're going to take mid of this sequence len of this uh, one to split into characters. Then we're going to sort that, so in alphabetical order, then we're going to concatenate it back together. So now we have place, sorted place, and then we can do this the exact same formula to sort the input. Uh, so this is sorted input. Uh, and then you can X look up that in here, lock returning from here. That will de anagram those for you. Uh, so that's another application. Uh, oh, that one doesn't work for some reason. Anyway, I'm not going to figure that out right now. Uh, I'll put a note in the video. Uh, and then the last thing, the last kind of example of where this comes up is uh, this one, Villain's case called passing notes, which involved uh, ciphering. Uh, so you had to kind of take a, take a uh, code that you knew had been in, encrypted by shifting the letters a certain number along. Uh, so obviously you needed to split that out into letters, shift them all back, and then put them back together. Um, the, the actual shifting is going to involve code and car, and we'll get to that later in the week. So I won't dive into that right now. Uh, so I think that's what I've got time to show you today. A uh, quick mention that uh, Peter's offer that I mentioned yesterday of a free spot in the January round is now fully subscribed, so that's gone, sorry. Uh, but the offer of free cases with the code bootcamp is still available and you should take that up. Uh, anything else to mention? Nope, I think that's all I've got for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.